This video tells the story of the Day 2 action of Hart's battery at Gettysburg. With a focus on Lieutenant Knox and his advanced battery section, it illustrates the circumstances for which he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. The video is extracted from over 40 hours of animation covering the entire Gettysburg battlefield on July 1st and 2nd. For more information about this acclaimed work, visit the website referenced above. Mid-morning on Day 2, the 15th New York Independent Battery, better known as Hart's Battery, moves toward its initial position. Hart's four-gun battery is one of four batteries in Lt. Col. Freeman McGilvery's 1st Volunteer Brigade. They are part of the Union Artillery Reserve, commanded by Brigadier General Robert O. Tyler. The Union Army's Artillery Reserve Park was located in the fields between the Tawny Town Road and Baltimore Pike, south of the Granite Schoolhouse Road. There, Hart rested and waited for orders, moving out at about 3.30. At the request of Captain George E. Randolph, in command of the 3rd Corps Artillery Brigade, General Tyler orders McGilvery forward from the reserve park. He moves toward the Trussell Farm and the Peach Orchard with two batteries, Hart's and Bigelow's 9th Massachusetts. When Hart's battery arrives at the Trussell Farmyard, Hart halts it, and with McGilvery rides ahead to look for a place to unlimber his guns. The location selected is along the Wheatfield Road, just to the left of the Peach Orchard. As the battery galloped into position, Lieutenant Edward Knox remembered that, quote, As we went in, Captain Hart shouted, Lieutenant, you fight the right section. I will look out for the left. My speed had carried me fully 100 yards ahead of the artillery line, unquote. Over the next 20 minutes or so, the artillery line, of which Knox wrote, is lengthened and filled in. It eventually covers over 600 yards along the Wheatfield Road, from the Emmitsburg Road to the western edge of Trossel Woods. Upon arrival, each battery is engaged, initially dueling with the Confederate batteries of 1st Cabell and then Alexander. Their 30 guns cover over 1,000 yards at the tree line to the west, along the low ridge where the present-day Confederate Avenue now runs. As the artillery duel continues, Kershaw's brigade of McLaws Division, Longstreet's Corps, steps out of the woods to the southwest. Moving first due east, Kershaw's left wing, the 2nd and 8th South Carolina, and the 3rd South Carolina Battalion, cross the Emmitsburg Road and move along the base of the slope, at the bottom of which is a branch of Rose's Run. They pause briefly to reform and then wheel slightly to the north. They head straight at the right of the Union artillery line and the supporting 3rd Corps infantry. In his advanced position, it is Knox's battery section that will be assailed first. Kershaw's left wing approaches the line of batteries, so close they can see the faces of the cannoneers. Lieutenant Knox wrote, quote, The Confederates thought they had my guns and made a dash for them. As they came, I let go both pieces with double canister, and as I did so, I yelled to my boys to lay down and pretend they were done for, and thus, not heeding us, the Johnnies swept through my section to meet a charge from the supports in our rear. Unquote. As Kershaw's left wing was sweeping towards Hart's section and the advancing 3rd Corps infantry, Kershaw was attempting to untangle the 3rd and 7th South Carolina regiments to the south. They were advancing through the Rose Farm buildings. He ordered the 7th South Carolina to shift to the right, but the order inadvertently made its way to the ears of the left wing regimental commanders. 
with success mere yards away, already having advanced through the guns of Knox's section and closing on the rest of the Union battery line, the left wing turned to the right, exposing its flank to point-blank artillery fire. The result is catastrophic. About one-third of the men on Kershaw's left are down. As Kershaw's shattered left-wing regiments limped away to the southeast, toward the shelter of woods that bordered the north side of the swale, Knox's men rose from the dead, so to speak, and reconstituted their battery section as a fighting unit. Having survived the perils of their advanced position, they withdrew to the main artillery line along the Wheatfield Road to await the inevitable next phase of the fight. It wasn't long in coming. With the battery sections now reunited, the first threat to heart at this consolidated position came from the same South Carolina regiments that they had previously engaged. Kershaw's shattered left wing was able to reorganize and send a strong line of skirmishers back to the north against the Union infantry on the southeastern edge of the Peach Orchard, as well as the line of batteries along the Wheatfield Road. High ground in the fields midway between the Union batteries and the skirmishers sheltered the Confederate men. They pecked away at both the infantry and the artillery, killing or wounding both Union artillerymen and their valuable horses. Then came the real trouble. Barksdale charged out of the Seminary Ridge woods toward the Emmitsburg Road and the Peach Orchard. He was on the verge of crashing through the 3rd Corps infantry at the salient, and the batteries were hastily withdrawing. Hart's battery was virtually out of ammunition, and just as McGilvery was ordering Phillips and Bigelow's batteries to the rear, Hart limbered up and headed for the now famous Trossel Farm Gate. Being one of the first batteries through the gate, Hart was on the way to the rear mere minutes and just a short distance ahead of McGilvery, who would pull up midway to the rear and subsequently organize a defensive line of artillery. Not part of the now famous Day 2 McGilvery line, Hart's battery reached the reserve park and was through fighting for the day. They would subsequently leave that area and take up a position at dawn on day three in the middle of McGilvery's new line along the southern part of present-day Hancock Avenue. For Lieutenant Knox's actions that day, he received the U.S. military's highest decoration, the Congressional Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For extraordinary heroism on 2 July 1863, while serving with the 15th New York Battery Light Artillery in action at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Second Lieutenant Knox held his ground with the battery after the other batteries had fallen back until compelled to draw his piece off by hand. He was severely wounded. The monument to the 15th New York Battery, Hart's Battery, is located south of Gettysburg on the north side of the Wheatfield Road just west of Sickles Avenue and across from the Peach Orchard. Visit our website to register to use this app and explore anywhere, anytime, on the battlefield. www.civilwaranimatedbattles.com